Well, as you know, if you clicked on this story going, what's this all about? Fingernails, hair, bodily fluids. Yeah, that's part of it. Only part of the story, unfortunately, as the search of Rex Hureman's South Carolina truck is uh, underway. A warrant uh, issued uh, just the other day for uh, this. It's uh, part of the gruesome saga, as you know, of Rex Hureman. Uh, Stacy, I got to ask. I mean, you've been uh, here on the show now for, for quite a while. Uh, of of all the stories that we've heard thus far and the evidence <laughs> that has come forth thus far in Rex Hewerman's case, which is very minimal if you think of it, because we're only like a week into this. Uh, how do you think it stacks up to the other cases in terms of uh, extreme behavior? Well, he is on the far end of the spectrum. I think he surpasses anything that we've followed. I think he surpasses Koberger. Um, because there's just more of it and time frame. And I, I think he he is an absolute monster. A- and we've referred to Koberger as a monster as well, if he allegedly did it. Mm-hmm. Um, this guy, he makes Koberger look like a little teddy bear. It, it just, this one really encompasses evil. This one doesn't mm-hmm. necessarily feel to me like, Someone who's lashing out because of some sort of bizarre jealousy and they did it once. I mean, all that's obviously horrible, but the calculated ongoing nature of this um, yeah. and the depravity of it and, and it almost becoming essentially a like a lifestyle uh, or a hidden double lifestyle going on uh, is what makes it even creepier to me. I mean, it's a monster, but it's like it needs another word. Uh, and I maybe evil is the right word for for someone like this uh, well it, and did you see that dennis raiders <laughs> I, I almost i'm feeling a little jealousy from him like bitch that's my gig even dennis raider said he seems like a clone of him yes <laughs> so he's he's infringing on on dennis's territory is is the feeling i got you know like yeah. step off dude you know I, and I have mixed feelings on this because Dennis Rader seems to have found a new way to hear, have his voice heard uh, by speaking out on virtually all of the cases that we've been covering at some point in time. It seems what's Dennis Rader's opinion, right? I don't like that. Dennis Rader is a horrible human being who feeds off of the attention like this. And well, it's weird that they're, they're still giving him a platform of any sort. Why is he able to speak about anything? Because it generates clicks. It generates feedback it generates things and he in his cell i'm sure gets off seeing his comments being published that's how he got off the first time when people were searching for all those years through wichita for the btk killer he thoroughly enjoys that sort of attention and i just think it's really kind of shitty that media agencies are going to dennis Rader and asking for his opinion his daughter uh, Carrie does speak out, and she has every right to. She, I think, is a good ambassador for families uh, of horrible people like this uh, as an example of, look, this does happen. You're not alone, and there is life after this. Uh, but as far as Dennis Rader's opinion, I, I mean, he can just fucking hang himself in his cell for all I care. I mean, he's mm-hmm. he's just a, a despicable blob of a human. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just, yeah, I think it's interesting. Uh, in the gruesome saga of New York's accused serial killer Rex Hewerman, new light is being shed on potential evidence and forensic leads. The recent execution of a search warrant related to property in Chester County, South Carolina, very far from Long Island, by the way, tied to Hewerman has been brought forth uh, with critical information about what authorities are hunting for as they piece together the puzzle in this chilling case. Registered to Hewerman's brother, Craig, a dark green 2002 Chevrolet Avalanche was marked for search, believed to contain contraband evidence or instrumental. What is this? I've never seen this one before. Instrumentalies. <laughs> that's a new word. I'm not sure what that's about. Lights, instrumentalites linked to multiple charges. I think it's meaning stuff, uh, including first and second degree murder. Uh, patronizing a person for prostitution and conspiracy to commit said offenses. The vehicle was a a focal point of the search. The truck, once secured, was uh, scheduled to be transported to Suffolk County, New York for a thorough forensic examination. 
The expansive list of property sought on the warrant provides a revealing glimpse into what authorities are specifically looking for as they unravel Hewerman's chilling narrative. Many listed items doubled as or dubbed as trophies are personal belongings of murder victims, encompassing phones, articles of clothing, jewelry, identification, even personal Bibles. Such trophies could possibly serve as haunting souvenirs of Hewerman's alleged heinous deeds paving a vivid portrait of the criminal's deranged mindset. Moreover, forensic and trace evidence was sought out, including DNA from fingernails, toenails, animal hair or fur, human hair, and skin fibers. Authorities are hunting for any latent fingerprints and palm prints that could be critical to tying Hewerman to his victims. Such evidence could be found in everyday items like furniture, mattresses, carpets, rugs, clothing, and even animal cages. I think the question is maybe coming up in people's minds of what's the deal with the animals? Have you connected the dots on that? No. Uh, it's just you have a pet. I can guarantee that if I were to run into you at Walmart and mm. I were to say, Stacy, freeze. And I point, uh, you know, a can of, uh, I don't know, uh, sunscreen at you. <laughs> I'm going to sunscreen you. Okay. Uh, um, and well, thanks say, for caring about my skin. Exactly. Um, and and you look around and, and like, we need hair DNA from your pets. I can guarantee you can look at an item of your clothing and find a piece of hair. Oh, and, I'm I'm looking at myself right now. It's not even funny. So, I, I'm guarantee that every time I leave the house, I've got my animals DNA all over me. So all the, over me. The thought process on that is if there's hair from an animal or a pet that they can then trace back to maybe a pet of one of his victims there you go that's Ooh. how you can tie that sort of thing together so authorities also sought access to electronic devices on and uh, or computers in all forms along with any records physical or electronic this likely hints towards a potential digital footprint that could provide insights into Hurman's modus operandi or provide connections to his victims his digital footprint his trail his GPS, that is all going to be extremely telling. We've already uh, seen some of his search engine history, which was blatant. So he clearly is not very good at hiding digital evidence. Uh, I can only imagine what that treasure trove is going to be uh, when we find out. Way, yeah, by the way, instrumentality is the property used in an illegal act. So that would be ah. his vehicle. All of that. I, I looked it up because I thought this is weird. I've, I've never seen that word before. So, I've never heard yeah, instrumentality. I'm going to start using that because I don't think anyone uses that word. Exactly. It's pretty obscure. We're going to play a game. We'll start using it a lot. Then we'll wait and then we'll watch TV. And every time we see it being used, you take a drink. It's like I started <laughs> instrumentality. <laughs> da, da, da. Uh, it was funny. I was at uh, I was having dinner last night with my family at a restaurant and they had News Nation on on every single uh, channel uh, or every single TV, which I was like kind of impressed by because it's it's a fairly it's a newer channel, but it they're is. really making some good ground there. I'm proud of those folks over there. Um, but uh, they it was uh, I think it was Cuomo and then uh, Dan Abrams. Uh, and it was funny, like that person's been on my show. Just talked to that person this morning. <laughs> Yeah. Isn't that bizarre? It's it's kind of like the whole, you know, Kevin yeah. Bacon thing. Yeah. It's like while I'm eating my bowl of shrimp. <laughs> oh, hey, Yum. Jennifer Coffin Dapper's over there. Um, anyway, uh, and uh, it, it, intriguingly, uh, Warren also mentioned any uh, of the known instrumentalities involved in the commission of a designated uh, of the designated offenses, including the uh, material burlap in which at least one of Hewerman's alleged victims was discovered wrapped. Other specific items listed separately as trophies include condoms. <laughs> what? I Well, if you're someone who's doing this sort of shit, I, I would imagine maybe anything is up for, uh, for using as a trophy. Uh, cut distal ends of black leather belts, knives, right. scissors, and bounty paper towels, specifically from the Bounty Modern Print Collection. The well, he's got discerning taste. I wonder if they're the smelly ones that uh, make everything fresh and bright. Ugh. The uh, warrant uh, points towards authorities' interest in locked rooms, storage areas, vaults, cabinets, safes, closets, containers. These locations could potentially serve as hidden uh, repositories of crucial evidence 
and the uh, final pieces uh, to this gruesome jigsaw puzzle, they're going to be finding a lot. I can only imagine what's on that property. And the brother, as of right now, whose property uh, is is that uh, or is a part owner, uh, is as of this moment of our recording, uh, has not been charged with anything. I would wonder if that's going to happen. If he was aware or knew, I mean, he, he granted he had a wife and kid and seemed to be hiding this under their noses to a certain extent as well. Well, and it sounds like they left town frequently and left him back behind, which mm-hmm. seems to be when he was doing most of the, the strange activity. So, you know, it, it just might be that they were a family that did things apart. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that anybody is, you know, an accomplice to any of this. Maybe they didn't even know. Maybe they just thought, you know, dad's weird, you know? What what, what strikes me as odd, and I mean, everyone in their own bubble, in their own world, you don't know something's abnormal or weird until you're sometimes out of that bubble. And, oh, yeah. and weirdness uh, sometimes presents itself as, oh, you know, that's if, if it's normalized slowly but surely. It seems Rex had kind of his own little spot in their house where he would store his stuff. You know, I don't, I'm sure he wasn't like, these are trophies from the murders. Oh, is that why you have that bronzed condom over there? <laughs> uh, but it seems he kind of had part of his own little space. And that is always weird to me when people, and we've heard it before uh, in, in cases like this, where they're, oh, yeah, well, that was my husband's room. I was not allowed to go in there. No one yeah. was allowed to go in there except for If anyone in your home has a room that you are not allowed to go into, there's something very wrong going on in that room. There's a reason. It's not just like, oh, it's, you know, my mom's crafting room or something. And, you know, you just have, you don't really go in there. You have no reason to go in there. But if you needed to, you could. Uh, right. That's one thing where it's like, you know, stay at a mom's crafting room or whatever it may be. Uh, or dad's man cave That's kind of his spot. But you can still go in there. Um, we have the spots where they're going to be visibly upset or violent or angry. Or you may find something that shows that the person in your life is, a I don't know, Long Island serial killer. Uh, that's very alarming. And I think yeah. anyone listening to this that's going, oh, my God, yeah, my dad has that or uh, my brother has that or my spouse has that, um, be very careful because there is probably a fairly nefarious reason for it if they are very protective and, like, it's padlocked, you can't get in there, period. That's bizarre i mean unless you're storing weaponry and you don't want other people getting their hands that's different but a, a trophy room of some sort and places only they can go uh that's that's scary to me have you ever well, ha- especially if you're not allowed into it if it's like you know i'll bring you in here escorted um because i've got collectibles that are worth millions and i don't want you effing with them mm-hmm, that's, that's one, one thing, thing yeah. but it's another if it's locked and you've never seen it mm-hmm. and you can't go there you've got a problem on your hands that's uh, that's not a healthy person that's doing mm-hmm. that sort of behavior. Uh, in uh, the next segment here this morning, uh, they'll be dropping in just a little bit. We're going to be talking about the family of Rex Hureman. We're also going to be hearing some accounts from a neighbor uh, and the observations on Rex's actions uh, in and around his property. Press subscribe so you don't miss that. That's coming to you in just a bit. You're locked into the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.